Okay, we're looking at a partial fraction example here. So we want to break this up into a sum of, in this case, uh, three different factors. Let me just get my uh, okay. Turn the pen on. And okay, so we want to break this up into, in this case, three different factors. So we want to set this equal to. Um, we have three different um, denominators here uh, that make up. Excuse me, three different factors that make up my denominator. This one is. Um, linear so 6x and we'll put an a on top of that so since the denominator is linear my numerator just needs to be constant my second denominator is going to be x plus 1 this also can be linear since it, excuse me constant since this is linear and since this one is quadratic this one needs to be broken up into excuse me this numerator must be in linear form so notice a b c d they're just distinct constants. We then want to multiply both sides by the denominators 6x x plus 1 x squared plus 1. So when I multiply all three of these times this guy here these denominators cancel all out so I'm just left with 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. I multiply this times these huge denominator I'm just left with x plus 1 and x squared plus 1. This one, the x plus 1's cancel, so I'm left with b times 6x times x squared plus 1. And finally, this one, the x squared plus 1's cancel, so I'm left with cx plus d times 6x times x plus 1. Now what you want to do is you want to look at your um, factors here and figure out is there any numerical value that I can plug in that'll make it so um, we'll get zero. Well in this case if I plug in negative one this will go away and so will this guy over here so that means this will become zero and this will all become zero. So let's let x equal negative one. So we got to put negative one in for every x value we have all the way across here. So this is 3 times negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3. And I'm just going to plug in negative 1 here, and you can just uh, guess what's going to happen. Okay, so negative 1 has been plugged in here. Since negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0, I get a times 0, and then this is 1 plus 1. Here I get b times negative 6, and then this is 1 plus 1. And here I get negative c plus d times this is another parenthesis so this is negative six and negative one plus one is equal to zero i forgot to do this side over here three minus two plus three since there's a zero here this all goes away and there's a zero here this all goes away so i'm just left with six minus two which is equal to four and negative six times two so b times negative six times two so b equals excuse me so b times negative 12 is equal to 4. So that means b equals negative 1 third. OK, now going back to the original, negative 1 worked because it made this factor and this factor go to 0. Now another appropriate value that will make some terms go to 0 is 0 itself, because 6 times 0, this will become 0, wiping out this whole term. And if 0 is here, that means that will all wipe out. So I'm now going to let x equals 0. So I get uh, three times, I'm just going to plug in zero. You can, okay, so zero has been plugged in for everything on the left hand side. I'm just left with three. Here I get a times one times one plus, this is b times zero times one plus c times zero is zero. So I'm just left with d times zero times one. So notice uh, this cancels out and this cancels out. I'm just left with 3 equals a. Okay, so we chose negative 1 because it made it so that we got a 0 factor here and a 0 over here. And I chose 0 because this canceled out and this canceled out. So using that same premise that I was, as long as I plugged the same value in for x on both sides of this equation, um, that was legal. So um, 
we can't always find a number that we plug in and make zero because there's no number that I can plug into x squared plus one that's going to make that zero. So what you do is just choose an arbitrarily no, an arbitrary number, any number you want, as long as you plug it into both sides of the equal sign, you're legal. Just like negative one was plugged in both sides, zero was plugged in both sides. I would like to choose a number that would make this factor equal to zero, but there isn't one. So I'm just going to charge any excuse me, choose any number I want, which in this case I'm just going to choose one. So if I choose one and plug in for all the x, let me see what that looks like. So I plugged in one everywhere I had x. So the left hand side I get uh, 3 plus 2 plus 3. I get 2a times 2 plus b times 6 times 2 plus c plus d should be a parenthesis right there, times 6 times 2. So we know that b is equal to negative 1 third and a is equal to 3. So let's simplify the left hand side and plug in a and b, 3 and negative 1 third. So this is 8 equals 2 times 3 times 2 plus negative 1 third times 6 times 2 is 12 plus c plus d times 12. So I'm going to simplify this mess here. So I just did multiplication on these two and then distributed the 12. Distributed, that sounds funny. So I get 8 equals 12 minus 4 is 8 plus 12 plus 12c plus 12d. So that means 0 equals 12c plus 12 d, which means that 12c equals negative 12d, so c equals negative d. Okay, so now we have a relationship that relates c to d. c is equal to negative d. We already used x equals 0. We've already used x equals 1. We've already equals x equals negative 1. So therefore, Hopefully we can use another substitution, another value, besides negative 1, 0, and 1, and the relationship that c equals negative d, and figure out what our statement is. So I want to copy this original piece up here and bring it down to the bottom. So we know from our work above that b is negative 1 third, a is equal to 3, c is equal to negative d, and now we just need to choose another convenient x value. We've already used 0, negative 1, and 1. So now this next the easiest number I can use is 2. So I'm going to plug in 2 here. I get 3 times 2 squared plus. And since I know a is 3, I'm going to plug in a for 3. And b is negative 1 third. So I plugged in 2 wherever I had x. a is equal to 3. Plug that in. b is negative 1 third. Plug that in. Now I'm just going to simplify all this work here. So I'll do some squaring, some multiplying, some squaring, blah, blah, blah. So I'll just do a little more simplifying. So 4 plus 1 is 5, 3 and 3 is 9, a third times 4, excuse me, a third times 12 is 4, and everything else you can see. So a little more simple. So I'll do some multiplication here and distributing the 36, combine 12 and 17. So I get 9 equals 25 plus 36c plus 36d, subtract the 25 over, gives me negative 6 equals 36c plus 36d. Again, we know that c is equal to negative d, so we'll use that in a second. I'm going to divide all three of these by 6, so I get negative 1 is equal to 6c plus 6d. c is equal to negative d, so let's plug that in. I'm going to move this problem down out of the way. So if I plug in c is equal to negative d, I get negative 1 equals 6 times negative d plus 6d. Mistake there, 36 times 2 is 72. So that's a 72c. 72c divided everything by 6 gives me a 12c. So now that's a negative 12d. So that's negative 1 equals negative 12d plus 6d, which is negative 1 equals negative 6d. So d is equal to 1 sixth. So if d is 1 sixth, that means c is negative 1 sixth. Didn't need to do that in red. c 
see is negative one sixth. So we just reduced our, or rewrote our original fraction. So partial fraction decomposition, I take this big fraction here and broke it up into three different fractions where A is equal to three, B is equal to negative one third, C is equal to a sixth, and D is equal to negative one sixth. So the thing to keep in mind is that as long as you use the same value on both sides of the equal sign, it doesn't matter which value you choose. So the best thing I could do here is I could choose two. So I took two and plugged it in on both sides in the equal sign and then did a lot of algebra and it all kind of worked out in the end.